Rob Bredo. I'm here at the VIEW conference, and my, uh, I work at Industrial Light and Magic. I actually head up the place now. The last time you were here, uh, you were actually on your way over to London to start working on uh, Solo, a Star Wars story. Now you're talking about the visual effects as well as a new book. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel you push things forward in this ever-evolving ever visual effects space? Yeah, one of my favorite things we got to do on Solo was really take some of those old school techniques and apply to them the latest technology uh, innovations to make it really work for today's filmmaking. So the perfect example of that is getting to wrap the Millennium Falcon cockpit in a 180 degree rear projection screen. So what you saw when you got into the Millennium Falcon was basically like a ride at Disneyland, uh, but we were able to photograph it. We did it at full film quality. So what, you know, when you saw those stars streaking into hyperspace, that was actually captured in camera, which is the film pointing at a screen. So it was real-time visual effects. And I'm really into real-time visual effects and where this is going for the future, and we're continuing to innovate in that space today. ILM has been at the forefront of that, and I know uh, both across VR and traditional films, you guys are using more and more video game technology like Unreal. How has that impacted what you guys are doing with that? Yeah, I think the real-time tools that we're leveraging both during post-production and in pre-production and for our VR experiences, those tools are becoming a bigger and bigger part of the filmmaking process. So um, we did some relatively simple incarnations of that for Solo. So we had pre-rendered material that would mostly play, but then we could trigger it interactively and then we could add interactive elements on top of it. So Blaster Fire was added interactively in real time while we were playing back the full quality media. And it, we kept the quality very high. No one knew what was real time and what was pre-rendered because it was all seamlessly generated. Um, and we're taking that even further on the new projects we're working on right now. As you guys are, are pushing things forward and using real time, how does that leverage the experience you guys have on your team that come from the traditional video game uh, space as well as uh, the LucasArts. Yeah, it's great to get to work with people from varied backgrounds as we change to really com change visual effects to be more and more real time. So on our teams in ILMX Lab, we have artists who have experience in video games and we have artists uh, who are longtime ILM experience artists coming together and creating the best in class visuals in real time. So it's, it's really combining that filmmaking expertise with the expertise of folks who've been making these video games and doing real-time graphics for a career that has really made it possible to achieve some of the things we're able to pull off today. Uh, when it comes to, uh, last time we were talking a little bit about Rogue One, two years ago, that was one of the first to start using VR actually on set and helping directors. How has that progressed for what you were able to do with Solo? Yeah, we're, we have a whole tool set, an end-to-end -end tool set now, uh, whereas earlier it was a little bit more of individual experiments where we build software just for a particular application. Um, now we have a tool called StageCraft that goes from the very beginning in pre-production when you might want to preview a set in VR, all the way through, including on-set real-time graphics, uh, motion capture, performance capture, all that is in, in, uh, encapsulated in this StageCraft tool set and it lets us go end to end in real time in visual effects. So it's a really powerful tool set and a, a creative suite of tools for filmmakers who want to explore this area. When it comes to uh, Lucasfilm, they have a long history of being one of the early purveyors of kind of showing the magic to the fans. Uh, as you guys are getting more and more involved with VR and using it on set, is there a future as people are at home having VR sets to be able to start seeing the way you guys make it in VR? Yeah, I wonder. We have done some behind the scenes uh, 360 degree experiences where you can actually watch on video or 360 video all around you some of the behind the scenes work from the films. And we're actually looking to see what the other applications are now for attaching people to the movies but also getting to experience it in, in a new way. How does what you guys are doing, for example, with uh, The Void, you guys worked on uh, Star Wars Secrets of the Empire, you have the new Darth Vader, how does that help or complement what's being done for the, for the actual films? Yeah, ILM X Lab, which is the part of ILM that creates those immersive experiences, we really work hand in hand. Um, the technology that goes into creating those experiences very much overlaps with the technology that we use on the filmmaking side to put together these films. Um, and some of the same artists and engineers and real-time experts work on these projects kind of interchangeably and go back and forth between these projects. So we're really fortunate to have a wide base of talent who are really passionate about these various kinds of 
ways that we can utilize real time in our production processes and to make completely new experiences. You guys have also over the years been involved with actual video game experiences as well like uh, Battlefront 2 most recently as well as the, uh, the VR uh, X-Wing uh, game. Uh, can you talk a little about how that, what's going on in the video game space influences what you guys do across other mediums? Specifically, Oculus recently came out and said they were discontinuing movies because most of their fans and gamers, uh, players, are playing video games. So I want to also touch upon the interactive nature of VR. Yeah, so our interactions with electronic arts are, are done primarily at a story level to make sure that the Star Wars stories and the Lucasfilm um, approach is consistent across everything that we're doing, whether that's a game with electronic arts or whether that's an immersive experience that's coming out of ILMX Lab. And at ILMX Lab, we have an opinion on the way um, and kind of a focus on the way we think immersive is really quite interesting for putting people into our worlds. And it really is just that. It's an invitation to actually step into our experiences. Um, and that's really our focus. Um, in ILMX Lab, it's more focused on that than it is about um, playing a game necessarily. It's really about being in a world and getting to be immersed in that world and experience the characters in a way that you may not have been able to experience before.